This looks pretty overwhelming at first, but there's really only two indicators you need to be looking at. This one and this one. Whenever this line is below this white line, and whenever these lines are below this white line, that tells me click the green button, because the price at that time is relatively cheap, so you're getting it on discount, and the price is due to go back up. That's why you'd click that. And the same for the opposite side. Whenever this line's above the upper white line, and these two lines above this upper white line, both at the same time, then click the red button because it's relatively expensive and due to come back down. I did a trade earlier today just to show that, so you can see right there, uh, below, it's below, click the green button, it reached the price that I was looking for, more or less, so I clicked the close button to end the trade, and then I made 35 USD in pretty much 35 minutes. That's it. There's so many different trading strategies and technical indicators to use, so how do you know which one to use? So to start with, it would be a good idea to just go with the most basic, simple, tried and true indicators like the RSI. This is RSI, this is the Stochastic RSI, because these have actually been around for decades, since the late 70s. And when you think about it, it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy as well, because if there's millions of people around the world using the same indicator as you, telling you to buy at the same time, then that's actually going to push the price up. So you can kind of see it's a, it's a big factor. It may not be the only one, but it's something to keep in mind. So how to know what cryptocurrency to trade with? So to start with, I would just use Bitcoin, BTC, because most cryptocurrencies follow the price of Bitcoin anyway. So even if you use Ethereum or all the other altcoins, they're, they're pretty much going to follow the price of Bitcoin. Not always, but most of the time. And because there's more volume traded on Bitcoin, it's more stable, and it can help to make these indicators a little bit more reliable as well. A really cool and fun way to test any strategy to see if it, it works or how accurate it is without putting any money in is to do backtesting, which basically just means going back in time and pretending to do a trade. So for example, uh, let's go look for some longs or shorts. Let's just scroll back before that one that I actually did. Like here, you would have thought the stochastic RSI is saying go short because the lines are above the white line, but this one's not above the white line. And yeah, even though it actually did turn out okay, the price did actually start going down, ideally you want to have both of them uh, above or below those those lines just because it's more reliable so we'll keep looking for one again this one this one says to go long but because this one is not below the white line only this one is you wouldn't go long not there so keep looking and here so finally we find these lines are above this white line this line is now above this white line this would be a pretty good spot around this area to, to go short because it's telling us right now the price is relatively expensive and on Binance you can use these cool visualization uh, UI tools uh, to help you just see it better or s set your, your targets. So you would see the price did actually eventually come down and if your target was around there you would have made the money. Um, and just real quickly, so these candles just represent the time frame that you're looking at. So right now I'm looking, each candle represents five minutes. If you click on the 15 minute time frame, it changes now every candle represents 15 minute blocks. And that's how you can test any strategy. To save money on trading fees, I personally prefer to use BUSD because I trade using the Binance platform and they actually show you how much cheaper it is compared to using other stable coins. So if you were using USDT, it would cost this much on the make or take a fees. You could make that a bit cheaper by making sure you have BNB in your futures wallet. Makes it a bit cheaper, but it's actually twice as cheap just to trade with BUSD instead compared to that. And you can make that even cheaper by making sure that you have BNB in your futures wallet. So that take a fee gets even cheaper. And just to show that as well, I forgot I had to top up my BNB. 
and because of that the trade that I did earlier today was just taking it from my BUSD from here there's my balance 5700 BUSD I was taking all the fees the commission BUSD and then I remembered oh I better top up my BNB so I sent it from my normal wallet 0 0.2 BNB and from then on all the fees so commission started automatically taking the BNB and as soon as that runs out it automatically start taking it from BUSD again so just try to make sure that that's always topped up and you'll get the cheapest fees also referral codes when you first make your account on Binance if you sign up with a referral code from your friends or family it can make the fees cheaper as well some good rules to win consistently with trading you can trade as less or as often as you want so you can either do it daily or just once a week once a month if you really want to do it but it's really important to follow a few basic rules because this is all based around risk management so generally on the lower time frames like less than 15 minutes you should aim for lower target profits which tend to be around one to five percent I personally prefer lower time frames because of how volatile the price can swing either up or down and there's a bit less mental stress involved when you're in a losing trade for a longer time so to start off with I would maybe suggest aiming for no more than 3% because if you get greedy there's a higher chance it might not hit your target and then it could start hitting the other direction and you might be in trouble so let me show you what I recently did wrong so here is my big mistake I normally use 10 times leverage to increase the amount of money I can trade with so if the price changes by 0.2% this actually turns into a 20% price change for me which means if the price goes in the opposite direction of my trade by more than 10% I'll get liquidated meaning I lose all the money that I put into that single trade so on April the 6th that bar there I broke my own rule and I learnt a very 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 valuable 7300 New Zealand dollar lesson I started along with some good signals so you can see the lines were there um, this was on the this is looking at the four hour time frame which I wasn't using at the time I was on the one minute um, it's just so I can scroll back easier and even on the four hour it was it was alright I was a little bit early and I started along <laughs> so you can see how that didn't work out but on the one minute time frame that was fine so first mistake I didn't I don't think I checked the other longer time frames to see where the market was at at the time so you should always ideally like check all of them really so in terms of one day or one week even uh, is the price cheaper or more expensive than it usually is and then you can come down but I normally start off with this and I think I didn't look at the other time frames and I just thought ah yeah no, it should be fine it was good long signals on the one minute time frame first first mistake second mistake probably the biggest one definitely the biggest one I set my target profit for eight percent that's really high like five percent is even really high I, I normally wouldn't even go more than three but I got greedy and I thought you know what I always win and miss out on making thousands more dollars through this I'll aim higher it always it always turns out good the one time that I actually went real high for this it had, it had to be that time uh, this was too high and I actually would have made probably a few hundred dollars if I stuck to my normal rules so it was always stick to your rules and then the market went real bearish so you can see these are four hour block frames but it went down and down and down and hovering over it you can see the price change there so it dropped by 1% then it dropped another 1.4 then another almost 1 another 1 1.3 and probably around about at this time or was that the 7th um, it would have been like negative at least a few hundred dollars maybe in the, the low thousands at that point or maybe a few hundred dollars and then it's like oh yeah kind of recovering a bit and then oh, no, and then massive 2% drop there so and then another one percent and then it was just dropping further and further <laughs> until you eventually see there was a massive one three percent drop there huge one and around about this time I think it was about negative four thousand dollars I was thinking man I should probably you know just take the loss for a change because I, I, you know, I hate losing when I don't when you don't force me to lose but 
you know, I, I, it's really unlikely at that point that it's going to recover. It's more likely that it's going to keep going down further. But I wanted to hold on. So again, this is my third mistake. At this, I should have done it earlier, really. I should have thought like, nah, I've made a big mistake. I shouldn't have been greedy. But no, I continued to be greedy. I didn't learn my lesson while I was doing it. And had that another massive 3% drop and then just another massive 1% one, well, what, 1 drop there. And it was the night before I was looking at it thinking, man, I could save about 800-ish bucks if I just take this massive 4 point whatever grand USD grand loss. But I was just hoping that no matter how low percent chance it was, what, what 1% or whatever, that it'll just recover. So actually at this point here, I had about three options. I could either wait it out like I did and hope that it'll recover and not hit my liquidation price. Or B, I could have put more money into it which would have dropped my liquidation so it gives me a larger safety net but if it kept going further like it did <laughs> I would have lost more money so I could have potentially just lost everything the third option was the more sensible one get out earlier take the loss and avoid losing more money so unfortunately I waited until I actually got my stop loss so another thing on that, at least I did put a stop loss on, so I actually didn't get liquidated. With liquidation, you actually lose your margin fee as well. So I would have lost a, probably another couple hundred dollars if I hadn't had the stop loss, so this is definitely not a good thing. You shouldn't really have gigantic stop losses like that. Of course the other mistakes are what led to it, but I was setting my stop losses just above my liquidation price. So I thought, oh, I've got a massive safety net, you know, it's so unlikely that it'll ever drop so much. But that time finally came. So I was fine for the first two and a half months. I had made about 3,000-ish US dollars. But everything, I was setting myself up, just recipe for disaster. I uh, got greedy. I didn't check the other time frames. I, I broke pretty much every rule that you could think of. Um, so I, yeah, I definitely deserve to lose that loss. But this is more to show, yeah, what can go wrong if you don't stick to the key basics of trading, getting greedy, those kind of things.